Welcome to this short video on cause and effect paragraphs, a model for developing academic ideas. Cause and effect is a pattern of organization uh, that's often used in academic writing, uh, both in essays and uh, paragraphs. Um, so we'll look at uh, a couple different uh, examples of this uh, and try to analyze how we can break down uh, techniques for uh, good cause and effect paragraphs in writing. So first we'll talk a little bit about the pattern and the purpose. So uh, much university writing may use cause and effect patterns to develop academic ideas. And here's a list of uh, a bunch of different examples. Um, if you're in a history course, for instance, uh, you might be using cause and effect to explain the causes of a historical event, such as World War I. Um, so in that case, uh, you have a one singular effect, the World War I, uh, and then you're exploring a number of different causes that lead to that. So your pattern of organization depends on uh, how you would organize the causes to explain that effect. In an anthropology course, you might be using cause and effect to explain what factors contributed to a cultural development. Um, and for example, one of the most important uh, cultural developments in, in human history, uh, how Mesopotamian society discovered beer. Um, so in that case, you have one singular effect, uh, the discovery of beer, uh, and then you're exploring the causes that led to that. In a criminology course, uh, you might be using cause and effect patterns to show an understanding of a criminological theory, for instance. Uh, so for an example, you might uh, be exploring how environmental factors can contribute to an increasing crime. Um, in a biology course, you might be using cause and effect to illustrate uh, how a particular life form responds to a substance. So for example, how cells in a plant respond to chemical fertilizer. Um, in a business course, you might be using cause and effect to demonstrate how a proposed action plan may affect a business, such as how a marketing plan can increase sales. So cause and effect, we often say cause and effect, but uh, sometimes you'll notice, depending on the uh, purpose of the writing, uh, depending on the thesis or the topic sentence, if you're writing a paragraph, um, will illustrate a different pattern of organization. Um, it'll either often be exploring causes or exploring effects. So cause paragraphs explain the reasons why something occurs. So you're exploring a number of different causes that lead to one singular effect. Uh, and then the opposite uh, for effect paragraphs. Effect paragraphs discuss the results of a particular action. So you're exploring effects. So even though we often say cause and effect, usually the pattern of organization is either exploring causes or exploring effects. It's not uh, usually doing both at the same time. All right, so how do we write good cause and effect writing. Uh, so we'll talk first about techniques of unity and techniques of coherence. Unity is all of the ideas are working together to support the main uh, point of the writing and coherence is how do you get everything to, to flow and to, uh, clearly to stick together. So unity can be achieved uh, by organizing paragraph as either causes. So if it's a cause paragraph, you're exploring causes leading to one effect. Your topic sentence, if you're writing a paragraph, should include the effect as the topic uh, and the causes as the main points or the controlling ideas. So it's, it would list the causes. Uh, your causes should be organized in a logical manner. Um, so uh, here's one example. Uh, you might have the second most important point uh, uh, in the paragraph at the beginning. Uh, the least important in the middle, and then the most important last. We call this emphatic order emphasis. Uh, so two, three, one, if we want to think about it that way. Uh, so then the la you're saving the best for last. You want your reader uh, to be convinced uh, most strongly when they conclude your writing. So you want to have the best point at the end. But you also don't want to have a weak start. Otherwise, your reader may be uh, disengaged or, or, or disinclined to uh, agree with you from the beginning. So you do want to have your second most important point uh, at the beginning. I often use this pattern of organization uh, and it's the most uh, uh, effective, I think, uh, logical uh, pattern of organization. You also might have sequential organization depending on the kind of writing you're doing. Uh, one cause may lead to another cause which leads to a subsequent cause which leads to an ultimate uh, or eventual effect. So this is kind of a chronological or sequential uh, time-ordered uh, pattern of organization, depending on the kind of writing you're doing. So we've talked about uh, unity in um, cause paragraphs now. Unity in effects paragraphs, you'd be um, 
exploring effects deriving from one cause and the topic sentence should include the cause as the topic and the effects as the main points or the controlling ideas. The effects then are organized in a logical order similarly um, and you might use the emphatic order as we uh, just uh, explored. You have to be careful with sequential order with uh, effects paragraphs uh, and I won't get into too much detail on that but uh, there's what's called the slippery slope fallacy which is a logically weak argument. Uh, if one um, effect leads to another effect which leads to another effect which leads to another effect the uh, the sequence is doesn't always ensure that the next thing is is likely to happen it might be progressively uh, more unlikely for something to happen uh, and that's the slippery slope fallacy um, so there's lots of information online about that uh, and uh, but just be cautious of the slippery slope uh, fallacy uh, uh, try to avoid the sequential order when you're developing effects paragraphs so paragraph coherence is how do you get all the ideas to stick together to that writing to flow quite nicely one way to do that so we'll talk about four examples one is to limit the number of cause and effects two is to uh, in organizing the overall main points in the most logical manner third technique we'll explore is using transitional words to link ideas or phrases uh, to link ideas and to re-emphasize a main point. And the fourth technique is to use what I'll call support sentences to identify causes or effects. Okay, so here's an example uh, of a paragraph um, and the paragraph is called The Right Formula. Successful writing is not a gift. Again, a good topic or a title for uh, a paragraph should identify a topic and hint at the point. In this case, uh, it seems to be about writing, and the point is that uh, it can be learned, that it's not necessarily just a gift that you're born with. Uh, so I'll read through the paragraph, and then we'll look at the uh, techniques of creating unity and coherence in the paragraph. People often believe, wrongly, that talent in writing is an innate gift and that without being born a good writer, they are doomed to be poor writers for life. However, any student can be successful in academic writing if he or she practices critical thinking, learns academic style and conventions, and writes regularly. First, successful writing, academic writing depends on careful, detailed, organized, logical thinking. What readers think of as good ideas or smart things to say really come from learning patterns of logic and strategies for thinking. By watching documentaries, keeping up with world news, and listening to academics who are intelligent in their fields, we can learn to think academically. Once students begin to think academically, they can build connections in their learning and write effectively. In addition, students should learn academic style. Much academic writing may have big words and fancy long sentences, but these are simply surface features. It is important to recognize that effective academic writing is more formal and objective, that I is generally avoided in slang, usually inappropriate, and that complete and accurately formatted citations for secondary research are a must. Lastly, in order to become a successful writer, students must write regularly. Good writing comes from practice, practice of organizing thoughts in common academic patterns such as definition, classification, process, cause and effect, persuasion and comparison and contrast patterns. Write, edit, write, edit, and write some more. This is the right formula. If students remember to make time to develop these habits, they can all become successful writers. Okay, so we've talked about these four techniques to create coherence in uh, cause and effect paragraphs. Uh, the first one we'll look at in this paragraph is limiting the number of causes or effects. So if we look at the example paragraph that we've just discussed, we have a topic sentence at the beginning, um, and you'll notice the topic sentence is the second sentence of this paragraph. Um, if it's not the first sentence, it should be the second sentence, but don't go too far into the paragraph without identifying uh, clearly for your reader what your topic is and what your main point is. So in this case, the topic sentence is any student can be successful in academic writing if he or she practices critical thinking learns academic style and conventions, and writes regularly. So the topic is academic writing, or su successful writing, um, and the point is that anyone can be uh, successful in academic writing. 
there's also so that's the topic and technically you could end the topic sentence there but a good topic sentence will also include what's called a preview or a preview of the main ideas for the uh, the readers that the paragraph will then later develop this creates a good clear direction for your reader at the beginning So in this case the three ideas are to practice critical thinking to learn academic style and conventions and to write regularly If we look at the way the pa paragraph is organized our first main point uh, Emphasizes that first point that's previewed in the topic sentence that successful academic writing depends on careful detailed organized logical thinking the second uh, main idea in the paragraph is that uh, students should learn academic style uh, and then the third main point is that in order to be a successful writer students must write regularly uh, all right so you'll see that the this paragraph just has three main ideas you could have four uh, or up to five but uh, generally you don't want to overload the, the paragraph because it might lead to either a really really long paragraph that is difficult to follow uh, or uh, a paragraph uh, that uh, tends to drift and doesn't support a singular main idea. At the end of our paragraph, we have our concluding sentence that summarizes that main point that was uh, emphasized at the topic sentence. Okay, so the second uh, technique of coherence that we'll look at is organizing the overall main points in the most logical manner. So, okay, so we've looked at uh, the first technique of uh, limiting the cause and effects for creating uh, good coherence in a paragraph. Uh, now let's look at the second idea, which is organizing the overall main points in the most logical manner. Uh, you'll notice in this example, the uh, points are organized in the emphatic order, where the uh, second most important point is uh, at the beginning, the third most important in the middle, and then the most important point that in order to be successful writer, students must write regularly. Uh, that being the most important point, it's at the end of the uh, paragraph. Okay, so our third technique, uh, again, is using transitional words to link ideas or phrases to link ideas and to re-emphasize a point. If we look at our model paragraph that we've looked at, we have transition words. Um, there's a transition actually from the first uh, sentence, which is our kind of common ground or, or introductory sentence to kind of uh, engage the reader and you'll notice that it it starts the uh, the topic sentence so it emphasizes that main idea so it's useful uh, in that case so however uh, any student can be successful right uh, in academic writing uh, so that's the main idea so that transition emphasizes that the first transition first uh, at the beginning of the first main point uh, emphasizes that in addition emphasizes a secondary idea and then lastly, we see at the end of the paragraph for our third main point. So you'll notice each of the main points have a transition uh, to signal uh, that it's an additional point. And that transition helps to create coherence and helps the writer to clearly uh, see the structure of the paragraph. Okay, so let's look at our fourth technique of uh, creating coherence in a paragraph uh, using support sentences to identify causes or effects. So if we look at our example paragraph that we've been working with, um, the support sentence, I'd say, between the first main idea and the second main idea um, works to kind of summarize that first idea and then move to the next one. Um, so it's supporting the coherence, so the ideas sticking together quite well. So once students begin to think academically, they can build connections with their learning and write effectively. So again, that thinking academically is the first main point, and then the writing effectively uh, um, is the second uh, and third ideas. And then at the end of the paragraph, we have a kind of sentence, a short sentence for emphasis uh, that emphasizes the, uh, the main idea, uh, the, the right formula for successful writing. Uh, and the most important point at the end is to simply write. Uh, and if you write consistently, um, then you'll be successful. So uh, that's... Uh, sentence we can call a support sentence because it's helping to kind of emphasize uh, and connect the uh, the last point uh, to the topic sentence again so let's look for another example uh, of a cause and effect paragraph uh, and this one is titled too damn much although hydroelectric dams may seem like an efficient environmentally friendly method of generating power they can have a significant impact on the environment by destroying an ecosystem disrupting fish patterns in downstream waterways and creating potential environmental risk for surrounding communities many may argue dams are a productive way to generate electricity without the harmful co2 
emissions of burning coal or the risk of nuclear power plants, but dams have risk. First, after a site for a dam is selected, all the trees in that region are clear-cut and the surrounding plants are bulldozed. This destruction of the environment is considered necessary regardless of the native plants, insects, or animals living in the area. Next, once the area is prepared, water is diverted from a river to flood the selected valley. This diversion of, river dis this diversion of the river disrupts spawning patterns for fish who may have difficulty passing further upstream or downstream past the dam. In consequence, other animals who depend on the spawning fish for food, such as bears, are affected or by shortened food supply. Other than risks to the ecosystem and species that live near the dam site, there is another major danger to consider. Dams holding back large volumes of water can be a danger during storms and in rare cases when they break. With extreme weather such as heavy snowfalls, heavy rains, or heavy winds, water behind the dam may spill over and fall uncontrolled towards downstream communities. Due to global warming, scientists predict even more extreme weather patterns uh, for the future. With these concerns in mind, as we plan for the future, we must be careful not to place all our faith in hydroelectric dams and carefully weigh the risks in comparison to our needs. Okay, so let's look at these four techniques of coherence in this paragraph. The first one, again, being limiting the number of causes or effects. In this case, there are the same number as the previous paragraph. There are three main points, and they're organized uh, in the same order that those three points are previewed in the topic sentence. Okay, so now let's look at our second technique of coherence and how that works in our paragraph here. Again, the second technique is the organizing the overall main points in the most logical manner. Like the previous paragraph, you'll notice that this second paragraph organizes the main ideas in an emphatic order. Uh, with the most important point at the end, the weakest point or the least uh, important in the middle and the second most important point at the beginning. All right, again, so let's take a look at our third technique of coherence in this paragraph using transitional words to link ideas or phrases to link ideas and reemphasize the main point. In our paragraph here, you can see transitions uh, throughout the paragraph. First, after the first main idea, next, after the second idea, uh, and then we'll also see in consequence. We also have a transition phrase at the end of the uh, paragraph uh, to emphasize that third point. And lastly, our fourth technique of creating coherence is our support sentences to identify causes or effects. We'll see perhaps most clearly the two examples of support sentences in this paragraph. Um, and these sentences are kind of uh, connecting between um, key components or key sections of the uh, writing. So our topic sentence being that first sentence, uh, this sentence actually isn't the first main point sentence. Uh, it's in between our topic sentence and our first main point. Uh, and it's a way to kind of bridge into uh, the, uh, the first main idea. Uh, many may argue that dams are a productive way to generate electricity without the harmful CO2 emissions of burning coal or the risk of nuclear plants, but dams have significant risks. We've already emphasized in the previous sentence, which is our actually our topic sentence, that dams are a, a danger uh, to ecosystems, fish patterns, and downstream waterways, and, and then potential risk for surrounding communities. So we've already emphasized the point at the beginning. Uh, this sentence actually just works to uh, re-emphasize uh, that main point before we move into the uh, the first main point of the body of the paragraph. Later on in the paragraph as well, we'll see this second support sentence, um, other than risks to the ecosystem and species that live near the dam site, there is another major danger to consider. This sentence actually doesn't list a third point and it doesn't actually uh, provide additional detail to our second point about uh, the disruption to fish patterns and waterways. Uh, this sentence really just summarizes or um, supports the connection between the second main point and the next sentence. So it works like a bridge uh, that we move to to signal to the reader that we're moving to the next main point. All right, so let's review. Uh, cause paragraphs e explain reasons why something occurs. Uh, effects paragraphs uh, discuss the results of a particular event or an action. 
So the first example, when we were looking at uh, how to be a successful writer, uh, successful writing is the why, and in this case, uh, our second example, the effects, is the effects of uh, creating a dam. The idea of unity is created through overall, overall order, um, and then coherence can be uh, created through these four techniques. Limiting the number of causes or effects, organizing overall main points in the most logical manner, using transitional words to link ideas or phrases to link ideas and re-emphasize a point, and then using support sentences to help to identify the causes and ef or effects and to sort of bridge between those uh, two sections. All right, I hope this uh, presentation was helpful. Uh, happy writing.